Now, the big election story of the past week, and no doubt the next, is the decision by the IEC to approach the Constitutional Court to appeal the Electoral Court's decision to rule in favor of the MK party. The move has set tongues wagging, leading to all sorts of speculation and accusations. With the IEC deciding to hold off from talking further on the matter, who better to ask than retired Justice Johan Krichler, the first chairperson of the IEC at a time, of course, when the country is commemorating 30 years of democracy. Good afternoon, Judge. Thanks very much for your time. Good afternoon to you and to the viewers. You're as fit as a fiddle, I can see. I feel that way. <laughs> I'm sorry to... Just what do you make, maybe if we start there, um, of, of this whole affair that has been playing itself out over the past week? Well, let's, let's get our balance straight. When an election is in the offing, rumors go run wild. Uh, emotions get hold of people and get run away with them. There's nothing particularly exciting about the decision of the IEC to take a decision of the, constant, of the uh, electoral court on appeal. Mm. On the contrary, it's a perfectly normal, proper and probably predictable thing to have done. I see no basis for suspicion or rumor of any kind whatsoever. Well, I mean, they are being accused, certainly by the aggrieved party, um, MK, of entering the political terrain. <laughs> the, the Constitution creates the Electoral Commission. The Electoral Act gives it certain powers and obligations, responsibilities. In general, they've got to see that the election is run freely, fairly, orderly, and in terms of the applicable law. There is now a dispute about what the law is relating to this particular issue. The Electoral Commission decides in its wisdom that it wants the opinion of the Constitutional Court on this matter of very important political significance to all of us. There's nothing in that to be criticized. I, I can't blame politicians for, for trying to score points off one another. But I must say, it's singularly unwise, if not unpatriotic, for a political party to attack the commission. The commission is the referee. The game can only be a good contest as long as the referee's integrity and authority is respected. It's most unwise to challenge that on an issue such as this, where the law is perfectly clear, it has a duty to do what it is doing. If you were a Musutu Mepia, if you were a Janet Love, uh, you would have done the same. Certainly, I think anybody who had taken the oath of office as a commissioner would have done the same. Mm. Here is an issue that is quite clearly of great political moment. Mm. Uh, MK wouldn't have been making the big noises that it does if it were not that important. It is quite clearly of great importance to the other political parties, particularly to the governing party. And for the Electoral Commission in those circumstances to say, I'm not going to take it on myself to accept the decision at the first level when there is so much dispute and, and debate about it. Let's get a final answer, an authoritative answer, and we can go forward in the knowledge, all of us, that we know what the law is. Doesn't the fact that the people, uh, the IEC has taken this matter to... Uh, which, of course, is the Court of Last Resort, um, is the very same court that sent the former president to prison. Please. Of course it's the same court. It's different people, incidentally. But be that as it may, it's got absolutely nothing to do with who sent Mr. Zuma to, court, to prison at the time. And incidentally, that's a pretty simple oversimplification of what actually happened. Mm. There are many of those who would say that Mr. Zuma sent himself to prison Invited. by refusing to cooperate mm. with the Zondo Commission. Mm. But that's a de politically debatable issue. Mm. To say that the Constitutional Court cannot determine the issue is once again clever tactics, but not wise. I do not believe mm. that it behoves 
any responsible political leader at this stage of the process of our seventh election to start throwing stones around in a glass house. Mm. I don't think it's a good idea. Now, I, I mean, in an era where all these court cases are being beamed live um, to, 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 to millions of people, uh, are those tactics... Uh, do stick in the minds of, uh, of, of, of many people, isn't it? For you, as a South African, you and I have one thing about which we and everybody viewing this show can be proud of, is that our Electoral Commission has established an unblemished track record over six contested elections in the past. For an emergent democracy to have done that without any blemish, without any serial contention, mm. is a world astounding achievement. Mm. For people at this stage to start throwing stones and mud and other liquid material at the Electoral Commission is not justified, and I believe it is not warranted. I mean, you went straight to where I was going to um, next. I mean, because, I mean, after 30 years, um, everyone is uh, taking a pause and saying, let's look back, you know, at uh, what we've done as a democracy. And among the institutions that have upheld uh, this democracy, certainly in the view of a great majority of people, has been um, the IEC. Do you think that lately or in recent years that has changed? In other words, it is not the IEC that people like you started and which over the years um, you know, was praised by a lot of people, including, um, it must be pointed out, uh, by former President Jacob Zuma himself. Well, yeah, there's, there's no doubt about it that the institution has carried on steadily with new members joining, old members retiring. It has maintained a reputation not only within the borders of South Africa, not only on the African continent, but anywhere where electoral administrators talk. And I've worked in many, many countries around the world. The South African Electoral Commission is recognized as an outstanding body. Not, uh, of course it, the membership changes, but the tradition stands, the staff of the, the members of the commission are, replace one another over time. There is no earthly reason to think that the standard is any lower now than it has ever been in the past. Um, may I just say one thing? I saw in the media an attack on Janet Love on the basis that she was acting improperly in January this year when she expressed an opinion on the legal issue which is now going to the Constitutional Court. It was Ms. Love's duty to speak at the time that she did. She was asked about the matter. She expressed her personal valid held view. She may be right, she may be wrong, but to fault her for having expressed the opinion is either ignorant or malicious. Are there issues or areas in our entire political system that you believe um, that um, could, in the end, wittingly or not, damage the um, elections um, ecosystem as we move forward as a country? For you, elections are infinitely complex administratively, technically, logistically, in terms of human resources, and above all, politically. These elections that are coming up are going to be highly contested, the most closely contested since we emerged from the darkness into the democratic high, high area. There is every danger that if senior participating players start casting doubt on the integrity, the whole process can get spoiled. We managed in 1994 to hold elections in the most impossible circumstances, in, the most, in circumstances where the experts said to us, you're mad to try to run elections now. 
You couldn't possibly do it. We succeeded because the leadership of the political parties mm. played with due responsibility mm. towards the country and their fellow citizens. It is the same duty that is required now for all to come to the party, to play the game, to play it fairly, and to recognize the authority of the referee and not to cast doubt on it for small political gain. Charles Craigraff, let me thank you so much for your time and for coming through. You're welcome. Really appreciate it.